there is so much to discuss about this Red Sox season just completed. And uh, a number of pressing questions that we will get to, pressing questions like the general manager, like the manager as well. But with uh, John Henry, principal owner of the Boston Red Sox, Larry Lucchino, CEO and president of the Boston Red Sox, thanks very much for taking some time and getting up early. I know you're not morning people by <laughs> nature generally. now, are you? Not generally. No? Okay. Uh, but I would like to do this, and I think chronological, to me, seems logical, to back up four or five weeks and sort of come forward through the course of events and then getting up to where we are right now. So with that, I'd like to ask you to begin with, on September 3rd, when the Boston Red Sox were nine games up, what did you think about your baseball team at that point in the season? I think uh, weren't people writing about that point in the season that this is perhaps the greatest Red Sox team ever? That was yes. uttered a couple of times. Yes, we were we were assuming you were in the playoffs. Did you assume the same thing? Did you expect? Well, the you same? never assume. I mean, I mean, in other businesses as well, you generally never assume that you're 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 going to accomplish your goals until you've accomplish them was there any Especially gnawing this guy he <laughs> was there... he's always i'm always a pessimistic uh, glasses half full kind of guy worrying about the six or seven things that came but, but you you had to feel good about i mean uh, terry Certainly. francona managed like he was in the playoffs and i didn't blame him nobody did yeah. john didn't we didn't blame him because we assumed you were all set well i think that was a reasonable assumption at that point given the length of the lead and uh, given these where we were in the season given the statistical probabilities of what would happen. Uh, certainly none of us anticipated a collapse of uh, biblical proportions that we endured. Were you Wait, aware how, of... How, oh, how did you like those statistics every day where you see the ba baseball... Baseball perspective. Baseball perspective. Yeah. Odds it was 99.6. Like even in the last week, they were still at one point, I think, 88, 89. So, yeah, we there's no doubt about it. We felt felt good about things. On September 6th, Tito called a team meeting after a 14 nothing win in Toronto. Were you aware of that meeting, and did you know the nature of that meeting? Were you made, made aware of it? We were not aware. At least uh, we were not aware of it. I was not aware of it uh, at, at that time. I certainly I, I learned of it much later. Um, but um, um, but that that's not uncommon. I mean, mm -hmm. Tito can have meetings in the clubhouse or things that happen in the clubhouse that we just uh, uh, don't know about. Uh, we're, we're not... Uh, um, included in them because it's a clubhouse matter, and uh, you'd think the manager has a right to speak to his team and talk to them uh, as as he chooses. So it's not unusual that we wouldn't have known about it. Did, we did. Did, we did know about Theo had had a couple of right talks, and we knew about that. But we heard about the the Toronto talk it may have been after the season. I think it was. Did you know specifically what he was upset about? What what forced him to to call a meeting and say I need to clear the air? Well, it would be hard to say we did because we didn't really know about the meeting itself uh, uh, contemporaneously. So, no, no, we didn't at that point. You, you, you're going chronologically, and at that point, we, we, we were unaware of it. He, he speaks cryptically about concerns, you know, couldn't reach guys. And now we, we, we always discuss it and wonder and ask, what is he talking about? Do you feel the same way, or do you know when, he, when we hear the manager say, I had concerns, there were guys I couldn't reach, they, they weren't in it together, they were concerned. Do you specifically know what he's talking about when you hear that, John? Uh, you know, there was some some crypticness when when we met, uh, but you remember we had problems over the years with certain players, like Manny Ramirez, for right. instance, was a big problem at one point for the manager, and uh, uh, but he had his back. Is that that's the clubhouse culture? As a manager, you don't throw your players under the bus. You do everything you can to uh, make them productive and, and to keep them that way. So it's um, in this case, um, we didn't get I, we didn't get any information along those lines at, at that point if we're going. Were you shocked that they didn't have his back? That they they quit on him? From what we understand, the players quit on Terry Francona. Well, if that's the case. Definitely, it would be. It's it's shocking. When did you first learn that players were drinking in the clubhouse, and what does your right and wrong compass tell you about that that issue? Well, uh, there are certain um, um, principles that are that are that are important, and uh, within the clubhouse culture, and I think that's uh, that's one of them. So uh, it's not something that uh, we think should be uh, tolerated. It, it, there's a rule about it, and it should be <clears throat> in, enforced. But um, it was uh, it was much uh, after the fact that that point was uh, was brought to our attention, and we're still trying to dig in to find out how pervasive it was, how extensive it was, 
and and, uh, and not try to just uh, superficially conclude that it was a a major factor in anything. Mm. John, specifically, what 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 loss, what game, what incident made you realize that the Titanic had hit an iceberg and you were starting to take on water? Well, it was a we we didn't just hit an iceberg. Uh, every day we you know we went what seven and twenty. This was a team that was going twenty and seven, and suddenly uh, went seven and twenty. But so it was throughout that process that we began to uh, wonder. You know why is this team breaking down? This is this is second straight year that on August first we looked great and looked like we were headed for uh, you know a potential World Series and second straight year that the team broke down physically. I haven't heard been reading somewhat what what the media have been saying and I haven't heard enough about that. That was that was the concern that started at some point during that decline. The biggest concern we had was we're, we're just not doing well physically. Yeah, that was the first kind of tip-off. Uh, we did. We were surprised at the drinking story when we heard that. We read that. We weren't. It all made sense because we saw guys weren't in shape. Josh Beckett didn't look like he was in shape. Did that bother you? Uh, do you think that's a factor in the decline that these guys just weren't in in condition to go to the long haul? It's certainly an issue that's important to us, uh, physical conditioning. And we have got, that's another one of the issues that we're looking into examining. It's our responsibility to try to right this ship you know, and give the fans what we promised when we got here, which was a team worthy of their support. And we're going to do that. So we're going to look into into the whole conditioning I- issue. I take a, 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 a exception to uh, pointing to any individual. I don't want to talk about any individual in particular, but I will talk about the general notion that, that our team has to be in first-class physical condition. And as John said, the last couple of years, we have seen a uh, dramatic uh, decline at the end of the season, and that is one of um, a myriad issues that we have to look at uh, going forward. Specific question. What's your opinion of fat pitchers? <laughs> you, uh, you're baseball I guys. I mean, did you always look at whatever Terry Forster or, or uh, you know, uh, Mickey Lolich and yeah. say, that's no problem. I mean, he's a pitcher. Uh, you know, position players can't be like that, but can pitchers? Because you had a few fat pitchers this year. Yeah, I day before yesterday, I spoke with a couple of our medical people and uh, trainers and so forth just to try to get an idea of uh, we're still early in this process. and That's one of the reasons there has been a lot to say because you don't want to go off half-cocked because one person said this. But talking to a few people, one thing I did I, thus far that, I've been able to establish is that the pitchers did their work. They were they did their cardiovascular. They're as good. This organization is as good as any in baseball. I'm told at doing their work. And what is what is their work? Cardiovascular, shoulder exercise very important. Very important. Something that we 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 have very little in the way as an organization of shoulder problems compared to other other clubs. And they did their leg work, and the, and some of the people, including the person you mentioned, you know, are um, what's the word? They're they're adamant. They mm-hmm. they that's what they do, and they and they don't shirk those responsibilities. W- were there nutritional issues? Which was another question I asked. Yes, I I believe there were nutritional issues, and 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 there's there's just one of the things we've learned in. Um, uh, getting involved with with English football is they have sports science and the the science of fitness is very advanced among football teams around the world at least the top football teams and so we've learned a lot just recently and our our people within the Red Sox have have learned a lot and I think that that there's much more we can do but the but the to me the most important thing is that. This was the third time in six years, and certainly the second straight year, in which a great team just couldn't make it through 162 games physically. And it wasn't just one or two players. There were, we were we were really banged up. We were really struggling to put uh, healthy players on the field. And that's, you know, every team has to be able to make it through 162 games. In two years in a row, we didn't do it. Sports Radio WEEI, now on 93.7 FM in Boston.